On today's show, Australia's single largest EV order, Victoria's big Tesla battery, and a lot more. Welcome, my name is Chris and I cover from an Australian perspective things happening in the space of electric vehicles, renewables, wind, solar, battery storage and more. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, please subscribe, it really does help. Or if you want to see exclusive behind the scenes, early access, polls and content that I just can't show you here, consider supporting the channel on Patreon where from as little as 60 cents per week, you get all this and a lot more. And a big thank you to my producers, Alan Byrne, Ashley Hill, Nigel Farrier and Tesla in the Gong. Monday's new show features content that my Patreon saw last week in full. Stories that they've seen are noted with a P with the chapter markers. So please do use those chapter markers, jump to the story that you want to see and let's get into the news. Check out this video by the United Kingdom arm of Greenpeace. Uh, there is no greater duty for any nation than protecting our people and our planet. The UK government is a global leader in tackling plastic pollution and we can be incredibly proud of what we are doing. What in the wibbling sticks? We are packing crisps. We have banned plastic straws, plastic stirrers, and plastic cotton buds to make sure that we turn the tide. It is time for the world to truly wake up to the damage being done to the environment and the sheer volume of plastic that is dumped. Let us secure the very health of the planet for our children, grandchildren, and generations to come. Powerful, isn't it? That image of the total amount of waste being produced every day is even more impactful. What you saw in this film is the amount of plastic that the UK dumps on other countries every single day to the tune of 1.8 million kilograms or 688,000 tonnes a year of plastic waste that is fueling health and wildlife emergencies around the world. I like to say Australia is doing better in this space, but after a little digging, and it didn't take a lot, we're actually not much better. In 2017-2018, we used some 3.4, we produced rather, 3.4 million tonnes of plastics in Australia. Of that, just 9.4% or 320,000 tonnes was recycled. Breaking that figure down even further, just under half of it, or 145,000 tonnes, was reprocessed in Australia, and 54% of that was exported for reprocessing overseas. You may recall, in the 2010s, we had two significant issues whereby China rejected dirty recycling waste, and also then other Asian countries got on board and then actually rejected taking our waste. And what occurred? Your recyclables actually just went into the normal tip, that is to landfill. So, sadly, Right now, it's still actually occurring. When you recycle, your council may well just be putting it into landfill. It might be processed overseas or might be processed here, but I now have significant doubts. Last year, state and federal governments announced that they would actually spend $600 million on new recycling infrastructure, with South Australia recently announcing that it was going to be, I think, producing eight or 11 new facilities and, well, covering off a lot more of this uh, plastic debt that we are all creating. This big announcement that occurred last year at the height of the pandemic, I think, got lost in a lot of people. And 
essentially they're going to be um, remembering that we're producing at 3.4 million and about 300,000 tons is now going to be um, dealt with here in Australia. So that's still only 10% of our recyclable waste. So what can you do? What can I do? Well, choose products that are reusable. Ask your workplace to support the same. Ask your council if they actually do recycle products and demand that they use your rates that you're paying probably very good money to, to actually get into a recycling uh, program. And obviously with this awareness campaign, this advert campaign by Greenpeace, let's all raise some awareness in this space. Hey, Aussie viewers, will we ever see Holden back in Australia? Because I would love to see this on our roads. Beautiful, isn't it? What you're looking at is Opal's iconic Manta GSE Electro Mod. For my international viewers, Holden, aka General Motors or Vauxhall or Group PSA, I don't know who owns who these days, they withdrew from the Australian market a few years ago. It devastated our jobs and our economy and sadly when I see cars like this, I doubt we'll ever see them on our roads unless some very nice um, person imports it for their own collection. But hey, that's what I do, what I do, to show you what's out there and that EVs can be fun, quirky, retro and more. Here's some details. The all-electric Manta GSE is the first electric resto mod by Opel and combines the classic style of the iconic Manta. The four-cylinder engine under the bonnet has been replaced by a 108kW 225Nm torque electric motor. And get this. The Manta GSE also comes with its original 4-speed gearbox, allowing drivers to manually change gears. Why? I don't get that, but okay. Alternatively, you just put it into the fourth gear and you can drive it as an automatic. With a 31 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, the Manta GSE has a range of around 200 kilometers predicted on the WRCV cycle. A 9 kilowatt onboard charger will take approximately just four hours to fully charge that battery. The classic round instruments have been replaced by Vauxhall's Pure Panel with two driver oriented 12 and 10 inch digital displays. The sport seats come with a yellow center line and offer improved comfort and support over the originals. Both Vauxhall and Opel have pledged to offer an electrified variant across the entire model lineup by 2024. So I really do look forward to seeing this on a road near you. American viewers rejoice. The 2021 Tesla Model S Plaid has finally received a definitive customer release date, 3rd of June, 2021. Held at Tesla's Fremont factory in California, this signals the start of deliveries for Tesla and will hopefully mean that the rest of the world won't have to wait until 2022. Maybe. Kia has opened orders for the e Nero and deliveries will commence next week. You can actually go online now, play around with Kia's car selector tool, either selecting trim level, standard or sport, and color, and commit to buy. Priced from $62,590 before on-road costs or driveway pricing of $67,490. This EV will qualify for Victoria's EV subsidy of $3,000, making it an attractive purchase. But if it was my money, I would go for Tesla. The sports trim comes in at $65,990 or $70,990 drive away and will most likely be a popular choice. Both models have the same battery size of 64 kilowatt hours and the nearer EV can do 450 kilometers on a full charge. With thanks to its permanent magnetic electric motor, it delivers 150 kilowatts of power or 3 to 95 newton meters of torque. DC fast charging is capped at 100 kilowatts and on board there's a 7.2 kilowatt charger. Details are on the Driven website. Lamborghini announced last week that it will have its first full electric performance car by 2030. The roadmap incorporates a hybrid transition by 2024. They're going to actually uh, emit 50% less CO2 by the beginning of 2025 and invest in its largest ever investment of 1.5 billion euros over four years to achieve that new 360 goal. Yes, okay, well, I guess I've got to start somewhere. Get your diaries out. Here's a few events to keep an eye out for. 
Last week, my patrons saw a short video about Spanish brand Cooper Bon, and this week, you, you can too, where they're going to be doing a worldwide unveiling on YouTube. The digital premiere will broadcast live Tuesday, 25th of May at 8 p.m. Link is below. I've got to get my voiceover voice on. Here we go. On May 27, or May 26, if you live in the US. Lucid Motors is unveiling its user experience. It's cutting edge technology that conforms to you and makes every interaction feel effortless. Mm, okay, details below. Last week, Western Australia welcomed its newest energy provider, the Yandian Wind Farm, located 175 kilometers north of Perth. Located in Dandaragan, I think that's how you pronounce it, it lays claim to some of the strongest and most consistent winds in the country. And because of this, Ratch Australia, in conjunction with Alinta Energy, installed turbines which are amongst the biggest ever installed in Australia. At the highest point, blades reach 180 metres into the air with a rotor diameter of 150 metres. Estimated to run at around 50% energy or capacity factor, Yandian will power the equivalent of approximately 200,000 households across Western Australia each year. Nextport, an electric vehicle importer, has placed its first order for 3,000 EVs from BYD for vehicle subscription company Splend. The deal, which is actually the largest of its kind in Australia to date, will mean that potential Uber drivers can drive a car that is better for everyone, but also means that their commission fee is 50% less for every EV ride until June 30, 2022. Whilst details of which BYD car will be imported, Luke Todd, Nextport CEO, hinted that the EA1, a $35,000 hatch, will be on offer. Sticking on the subject of batteries, here's an interesting turn of events for the defunct Wallaroang power station. This used to be a 1000 megawatt coal power plant and it was closed in 2014. Now it might just have a second life as, guess you can have a guess now, <laughs> a battery, yeah. Proposed by Greenspot, a company that specializes in rescuing stranded assets from fossil fuel companies, they're going to transform this site into both a recreational and commercial endeavor and planning a massive 500 megawatt and 1000 megawatt hour battery, which will make it one of the world's largest grid batteries and be approximately five times the size of the Hornsdale battery. Makes you wonder how this guy things that gas and coal power plants can actually be built and how they can even compete with these big batteries. I recently went to check out how the Victorian big battery is coming along and here's some footage which my Patreon saw a few weeks ago. Covering an area smaller than the football oval at Geelong's GMHBA Stadium, this site is located 13 kilometers northwest of Geelong and still very much a construction site with most groundwork done for the future installation of 210 Tesla Megapacks. When I filmed this, there were already 20 installed and my reaction was, they're huge. It's hard to impress upon you just from this footage how big they are. Roughly a little shorter than me, but seven meters in length. Kind of like a shipping container, but a third smaller and better looking. The site will be home to one of the world's largest grid scale batteries, capable of 300 megawatts of power and storage capacity of 450 megawatt hours from Tesla Megapacks. That will be enough energy to power over 1 million Victorian homes for half an hour. The Victorian battery will be approximately double that of the very successful Hornsdale battery in South Australia and its job is to support Victoria's transmission network, helping to reduce costs for energy consumers through like enabling energy storage, obviously, from wind and solar, allowing more power to flow into the state, increasing competition and pushing electricity prices down, and obviously helping to avoid blackouts and associated costs. It's exciting stuff and I'll do another flight when this project is complete. 
Thank you once again for tuning in and finding out what is happening in Australia and around the world. If you've enjoyed the episode, please hit that subscribe button. Got a question or a comment, put it below. Consider supporting the channel over here on Patreon. And if you do nothing else, be good, be great.